of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Rider of the Plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Mon Silver, let's go because I'm Silver. Blackwood General Store in Bentonville. As the genial proprietor figured up the cost of the provisions which he had stacked on the counter for the Indian, the door opened. The man who entered wore no badge, but he could be identified as a manhunter as easily as a bloodhound. Lean and grizzled, he had gimlet eyes and a mouth that looked like a knife slit in a piece of leather. Tom Blackwood put his pencil behind his ear and greeted him. Howdy, Sheriff. You're looking for the slate again? Every lawman in the West has been looking for those killers since he broke here in Colorado. Well, Indian, your bill is $16.10. Oh, well, here. Your money. $20 gold piece, huh? It rings true. Maybe it does. But he don't. Red scheme, how come we'll have a double eagle? Oh, why you ask? And Jim Niles, the law in Kiowa County. Oh, let him alone, Sheriff. Lots of Indians have money these days. Yeah, maybe so. But what about those provisions there? That's the kind of stuff white men eat. What's more, he didn't buy any tobacco like an honest Indian would. Well, me not smoke. Where are you taking those bitters? All right, talk up or I'll throw you in jail. Now, see here, Sheriff. You can't bullyrag a customer of mine just because he's a redskin. You keep out of this tongue. He's got his rights. Indians are wards of the government. If you arrest him for not answering questions, I'll report you to the United States Marshal. Oh, you will, eh? Black Hood, you're the first fellow who ever butted into my business since I took office 20 years ago. I know my job. I get my men, whether they're train robbers or tramps, road agents or redskins. You didn't get Lord Jack. I'm still after that woman. <laughs> He's still laughing at you, tin star. Black Hood, you it. Well, remember that. I thought he was going to plug me. Oh, me sorry, me cause me trouble. Oh, you're not to blame, Injun. We we'll both have to be on guard. Jim Niles never forgets nor forgives. He's got ice water in his veins and a jail door padlock for a heart. Oh, me savvy. They say he was so strict at home that his motherless daughter ran away when she was only twelve. Still, I have to admit that as far as catching and killing our hooks goes, he's a top-notch sheriff. The score would be perfect if he could catch Lord Jack. Ooh, Lord Jack, fella. 
The stage robber who worked this county seven eight years back. He always wore a mask and got his name from the lordly way he acted. After each job, he'd send the sheriff a note, defying him and calling him Tin Star. Oh, now me see why you make a mask. I shouldn't call him Tin Star, knowing that it was like sticking a knife in an old wound, but he had me robbed. Uh, what do you think happened to Lord Jack? Likely he's dead, but he could be living peaceably right here in town. I wouldn't know him, and I was a witness to the last holdup. up uh, when that happened? I mind the exact date because it was then I first saw Bentonville. June 20th, 1870 it was. Uh, that day I was on a stagecoach bound to River City by way of Bentonville. The only other passengers were two women, a dance hall keeper called Madam Spain and a girl who said her name was May. About 25 miles west of here, the old concrete began to bounce over a lot of rocks. Ladies, we hit a rough stretch of trail. Better hold on to something. Let's fill on the box till they let it dry. Oh, see, now I'm four of these things working right in the bunk. Oh, thank you. Hey. Now we hit another rock. Oh, that confounded dry. Oh, hey, boy, we can't hear them. Stuck your head on the door handle. Let me get them back onto the feet. Yeah. Hey, don't hand me your canteen. Here. here. She badly hurt? Well, I've seen a lot of busted skulls in my time. I'm afraid she's got one. Stick your head out the window and tell that driver to hurry. Yeah, right. Driver, speed it up. Girls hurt needs the doctor. Can't drive no pastor. Help the rules. You got blue going ahead? Can't help it. Gotta follow the rules. Oh, what the hell is going on? There's a road agent riding alongside. Where's the mask? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take the brakes. Oh, 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 Beat the kind of dope in the door and step out. I'm sorry that I have the inconvenience. Look here, you. We've got a girl in here that may be dying. Take my diamonds and let the driver stop this thing rolling again. Madam, I never take anything from a passenger. I rather expected to carry off the Wells Fargo boxes under the back seat. But if the young lady is injured, well... see the chief hurt bed. You've got to rush it to River City where there's a good flow going. The driver's running away. He's gone into the brush. Mister, do you think you can drive this outfit? I'm not even a good hand with two horses, let alone six. In that case, I'll hitch my horse behind and take the lines myself. Then, Injun, Lord Jack climbed on a box and we really rolled. Right through Bentonville we went with him still wearing his mask. Of course, he was seen. Sheriff Niles and a posse took after us, but we beat them to River City by a few minutes. What happened then? Well, May wasn't hurt near as much as we figured. By the time we got a doctor, the posse was in town. Lord Jack had to shoot his way out, and in the fracas, he put a slug into the sheriff's arm. If he has ever been seen since, nobody knows it or is told about it. As soon as May got well, she very much like him. Well, that, that is a strange story. Well, tell me go. Well, yeah, here's your change. Call again if you keep out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> a short time later, Toto rejoined the Lone Ranger at a camp in the nearby hills. He repeated the story of Lord Jack and told of his encounter with the sheriff. After a moment's reflection, the masked man said, Toto, I planned to tell the sheriff that we had traced Sam the Slater and his gang into Kiowa County. But now it appears that such a step would only get us into trouble with him. Well, better if we work alone. Strange that the outlaws left a clear trail this far and suddenly began using every dodge known to hunted men. They'll throw us off the track. Maybe they'll find out we follow trail. That's possible. But why did they come here? They bypassed the Badlands, a natural hideout. That make it look like them got friends here. I, I think that's the answer. Right now, they may be staying on some ranch instead of concealing themselves in a cave or shack. Ah. And what we do... We ride every trail around here, showing ourselves, letting it be known that we're after the gang. That may frighten them into running again or bring them out for a fight. Them fellas already killed ten men. Yes, I know it may cost us our lives. But they must be stopped before they spread their reign of terror all over the West. All right, get mounted. 
As the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend put his dangerous plan into operation, a rancher who lived several miles beyond the line, dividing Kiowa County from another county and state, put down a newspaper he had been reading in the kitchen of his home. He was Joel Denton. Turning to his attractive young wife, he said, May, is Billy Boy asleep? Yes, dear. Why? I don't want him to hear what I'm going to say. I've been reading about the Slater game. I knew Sam Slater in the old days when I was Lord Jack. He once visited this ranch. I don't see why that should worry you, George. The trail of murder these killers are leaving leads this way. He wouldn't dare come here. Maybe not. But I ought to send you and Billy away until they're caught. Away? Where? To my father? The great Sheriff Niles? You were on your way back to him that day we met. Because I was hungry and desperate. That bump on the head saved me the shame of having him slam the door in my face. It gave me Madam Spain's friendship. Your love. Your father is still hunting for me. It isn't fair. You've reformed. You paid back every cent you took. Why, you slave night and day for years to do it. Even if Wells Fargo refuses to prosecute me, I'm liable to 20 years in prison on a charge of shooting your father. He'd call it wounding with intent to murder, though it wasn't. Sometimes I almost wish that you had killed him. He never had any feeling for me. He's just a machine, a law machine. He never forgets an outlaw's face after seeing it once, but... I doubt that he'd know me if we ever met again. Howdy, Lord Jack. What? what? Sam Slater. And his boy. See four fingers, Comanche Bill, Outer River Kid, and Split Lip. All right. What do you fellas want? You've been reading the paper, partner. Can't you guess? Don't call me, partner. I never belonged to your gang of killers or any other gang. Well, maybe not. Once you had to have my help in getting rid of some Wells Fargo gold. Wells Fargo has been paid back. I'm going straight. That's all the better for us. Nobody will think of looking for us on on a John Spread. You can't stay here. Ten and six shooters and five rifles say we do. We're cowhands you hired, you savvy. What? I'll hide you. It was a week later when the Lone Ranger and Topple camped for a night in a ranch district beyond the state county line. They had crossed the unmarked boundary without knowing it and were within a few miles of Joel Denton's spread. On the following morning, they rode on again. But as they reached a clump of bushes a short distance from the campsite, the masked man drew rain. Hello, oh, Carlo. Oh, 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 oh. What you see, Kimasabi? Someone left a horse standing here last night. Ah. Uh, him get down and watch us. Long time. Their mark for in rest rifles. The good thing one of us was awake all the time. Otherwise, he might have sneaked in close enough to shoot us. Maybe him one of outlaws. We'll trail him and find out. Come on, Come on. A short time later, the fugitive killer known as Split Lip burst into Joe and Captain's bunkhouse, where the other members of the gang had slept while he watched the trail to the ranch. Rousing them, he reported, Hey, fellas, the masked man and engine are headed this way. Hmm? How do you know? I found the camp and watched it all night. After I pulled out this morning, I saw them again. They were tracking me, but I didn't get a chance to plug them. That's all the better. We'll trap that masked fellow alive. Alive? For what for? I aim to find out who he is before we kill him. Now, here's what we'll do. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue. Hunted by the Lone Ranger and Toto, a gang of escaped convicts plan to trap them on a ranch owned by Joel Denton, a reformed stage robber. The masked man and Indian rode into a cottonwood grove and sighted the ranch buildings in the distance. They pulled up. Oh, 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 oh. Otto, the tale of the man who stalked us last night seems to lead directly to that ranch. Ah. And what we do? You stay here with the horses. I'll scout around the place on foot. The banks of that creek over there will hide me until I reach the corral. He's... How could it be? Oh. How soon you'll be back? I'm not back within an hour. Or you'll hear shots. You know I'm having trouble. And me come plenty fast. Adios. Adios. <laughs> Yes, I reckon there's some farmers. Where in tarnation did you get him? A 
friend and I had trailed them for several weeks. We found them about ten miles east of River City. Sheriff, I'll tell you where we got captured. It was on Joe Denton's ranch. That double crosser used to be the road agent they called Lord Jack. Lord Jack? I knew I'd get that high for it now who come time. As soon as I tell you, critters, I'll pick up a deputy across the land and go after him. Sheriff, those prisoners are some of the most dangerous men alive. Do you need any help in jailing them? You see, I don't cotton to other fellas doing alarmments, which I don't need help or advice either. I see. Move through it. Several hours later, the Lone Ranger stood in the living room of the Denton Ranch House. With him were Toto, Mrs. Denton, Madame Spain, and the doctor. You people had better know right now that officers may arrive at any moment to arrest Denton. Later identified him to Sheriff Niles as a former stage robber called Lord Jack. It isn't right. Joel has squared himself. Oh, hush, dear. Your boy is here yet. Where is he? A Mexican cook is sleeping in the kitchen. Yes, sir. That sheriff is Mrs. Denton's father. I brought May and Joel together and put them on the right road. But just let that old curmudgeon come. I've got a big surprise for him. He's coming now. Doctor, we'd better meet him on the porch. Yes, let's do it. Who's there? Yes, sir. Carroll County. Deputy Brinkley of this county estate. Oh, it's you, man. Yes, indeed. He's your fellow who captured the Slater gang here in Joel Denton's place. Joel Denton was chiefly responsible for the capture. He saved my life, and in so doing, was so scared. I want him for crimes he committed years ago. Now let us in. All right. Come in, Joe. Where is he? Here, right in there. But he's unconscious. Now, how can you serve a warrant on a man in his condition? We'll wait till he comes to or dies. Sheriff Niles, I don't like this business. Deputy, you do your duty or I'll report you. Listen, you old sidewinder. You haven't got a thing on Joe. Oh, he's wanted on ten counts of stage robbery. Not anymore. Read this letter I just got today. Hmm? Where's Fargo, Ed? I've been dealing with him on Joe's account. He's paid off every cent he took. And they promised not to prosecute him. I want Joe betting for something else. And it's something you can't fix. Here's a warrant. How does it read? Well, it says that on June 20th, 1870, John Doe, alias Lord Jack, did feloniously wound Sheriff Jim Niles of Kiowa County, where said sheriff was performing his duty. It uh, seems to be an order. After this deputy arrest Denton, I'll have him extradited and prosecuted to the limit of the law. Sheriff, did you ever hear it said that the quality of mercy is not strange? Nope. But the law is no sin the way I enforce it. You're not human. I'm a lawman, lady. Don't you know me? Why should I? I don't pay attention to women. I'm your daughter, May. I'm married to Joe. Yes. Yes, I can see it now. So I'm the father of an outlaw's wife, huh? I know it won't do any good to plead with you. You're right, it won't. May, let me see, Billy. Come on, Doc. Deputies come to. Now's our chance. Come on and make the arrest. Uh, one moment, Dad. Uh, I'd like to say something. He had masked man to talk fast. Sir, if you're a good lawman, you take a lot of pride in your record. You have a strong sense of duty. But can you find it in your heart to wreck the lives of your daughter and son-in-law? Perhaps even kill him? It's the law. The law has its limits. It's now the 20th of June, 1877. By my watch, it's a minute to 12 midnight. It's the same time with a grandfather clock in the corner. Whatever it is. In your state, there's a statute of limitations on all crimes except murder. It runs out in seven years. After midnight tonight, you can't arrest Denton for a crime committed over seven years ago. Virginia, you're right. If it is, you'll have to act fast. I could have delayed the serving of that warrant until it was too late. But I want you to make this decision yourself. I'll get Billy right away, John. What do you do? Billy must know. Get him. All right. Come out of the kitchen, Billy. Your daddy wants you. Mama, who's that man in there, son? He's a friend, Billy. He's a great sheriff. He always gets his man. I didn't know I had a grandpa. Yeah. Oh, grandpa, you must be like my daddy. 
He caught five real bad men today, and they shot him. My daddy's brave. He's good, too. Mm -hmm. Sheriff, five seconds or twelve. Grandpa, why don't you say something? What's that paper in your hand? Yes. Well, it's nothing of any account. I'm tearing it up right now. Where's your bag, Grandpa? Well, she will tell you. Once she was an outlaw who called me King Star, and it made me right mad. So I threw my star away. I bet you got him. Nope. I never did. And never will. Oh, May, your daughter's getting a natural sleep now. Oh, thank heaven. You'll recover if nothing happens. Nothing will, Doc. Come on, fellow. Uh, it. Nice man. Uh, he and the engine are gone. Uh, I knew the engine wasn't any ordinary redskin the first time I saw him. The masked man isn't any ordinary fellow either. You you know who he is? The engine told me. He's the Lone Ranger. by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played